Hey guys, welcome back to Codebreakers. Now before you run off and install another model, this video matters because Flux2 client looks open, but the license story decides whether you can actually build with it. Today we are properly testing Flux2 client inside ComfyUI and we'll also put it up head to head against ZImage Turbo. And more importantly, we are breaking down what you can sell and what you cannot and which version is actually safe long term. Results first, details later. Let's get to it. Today, we are testing Flux2 Klein inside ComfyUI. This is a new Flux family model focused on speed and interactive workflows. There are two main variants, base for flexibility and distilled for speed. We will benchmark it against Z Image Turbo. We will use the same prompts, the same resolution and fixed seeds. We will measure time and memory and compare text faces, hands and prompt adherence. All workflows and model links are in the notes. Testing was conducted using a head-to-head -head methodology. Both the Z-Image model and Flux Klein models were evaluated under the same conditions. FP16 variants, the same prompts, the same resolution, no LORES were used. Testing focused exclusively on image generation. Photorealism stress tests were performed first. These included skin texture, eyes and reflections, hands and joint structure, fabric folds, hair strand detail, glass refraction, metal machining, architectural perspective, food realism, and complex indoor lighting style. Stress tests were then applied, including clean anime, cinematic anime, realism, cyber-realistic styles, anime, cyberpunk, painterly anime, hyper-stylized realism, CGI, film characters, retro 1980s anime, dark fantasy, and concept art. Dynamic scenes were evaluated separately, including multi-character compositions, action poses, camera language, depth handling, and foreground background separation. Multiple genres were tested, including video game cinematics, Hollywood action film, noir, French, new wave, Japanese manga film, cyberpunk, historical epic, dark fantasy, and anime action. Market-driven prompts were included. Edgy anime, three-dimensional adult characters, provocative but non-explicit. These were used to evaluate pose accuracy, anatomy, lighting response, material behavior, and bias. Results show that Z Image Turbo consistently delivers stronger image quality. Flux2 Klein demonstrates a clear speed advantage and lower resource usage. However, detail fidelity is reduced. Structural consistency degrades earlier. And complex compositions expose limitations. Image editing also struggled to maintain identity and coherence. Flux2 Klein has a valid use case for fast iteration and low VRAM workflows, but it does not replace higher fidelity models for detail-focused image generation. Astra, over and out. So guys, any of you want to play along, you can grab the workflow from my Patreon for free. The link's in the description. All right, now that Astra's covered what this model is and how it fits, let me quickly frame variants, licensing and setup before we start generating. Flux2 Klein comes in multiple variants, but today we're starting with the largest and the highest quality option available, the base model. This is the best case scenario. No speed shortcuts, no distilled compromises. If the model can shine, this is where it should happen. On licenses, the smaller variants are designed for accessibility and speed, while the larger checkpoints sit under the more controlled commercial terms. That matters if you're building. But for testing quality, what matters is performance. And that is what we are focusing on first. Setup wise, make sure your comfy UI is fully up to date. Older builds will not load these workflows correctly. I am using the official comfy UI workflows, which are already organized and posted on my Patreon. There are also image to image and edit workflows available. We will come back to those later after direct head to head with Z image. For now, we are starting clean text to image only, no comparisons, no tricks, just to see what the model does on its own terms. Let's generate a few images. So after changing the prompt here, I managed to get clear text. So text rendering is working. So here we are testing the text to image workflow, simple 1024 square image using the Flux2 Klein 9 billion base model, the top model. Next, we'll prompt for a close up portrait of a middle aged man with natural skin textures. We just want to check the skin texture on this. The model is blazing quick and here's the result. Next prompt is for an ultra realistic close up of a human eye with sharp iris detail. That's Q prompt. Here's that result. It looks a little bit plastic and a bit unnatural. The iris detail looks a bit off key. Let's reseed and run the model again. And this is what we get. Still the same. Next, let's try some hands. We're looking for four fingers and a thumb. 
first image is a mess but we will reseed and try that one again and we get five fingers and a thumb and it's not a great look it's so 2025 that I did give it a couple more tries and I managed to get some good hands in the end so maybe a bit of trial and error so next we want a full body studio photograph we want to see some cotton t-shirts realistic fabric okay I'm going to increase the size of the images now to 2048 which is four times the size that's much higher fidelity for these next images and here's the result and who's this geezer so fabric looks okay let's move on I'll let you be the judge I'll requeue this prompt here's the next image I'll zoom in so you can see the resolution and let's move on to the next prompt which is going to be a photorealistic head and shoulders portrait of a woman and I ran this prompt a few times because um, I was hoping for a different result to be honest I kept getting the same kind of pictures if you catch my drift now this continued on for a little while and then I decided to change the prompt to specifically state for different racial groups and these are the ones I got. I started with Indian and the first girl I got had a moustache. Don't look at me, ask the model. And then I went on to South American and then I asked for Nordic girls and then North American, then Chinese and eventually African. And these are all the images I got. Every single skin texture looks a bit plasticky. There's no way I can use any of these in 2026 now. You guys would slate me. I mean, I could run a couple of them through a face detailer workflow, but it's too much work. But it kind of is what it is, and we'll move on to our next test. So next I prompted for a realistic photograph of a clear glass bottle with some water in it. We should see some nice refraction. And here's what we got and I ran this prompt a couple more times. Okay, so the next test was a macro photograph of some stainless steel with some scratches in the brush metal. And here are those results. So let me just quickly cover how long these are taking. So these are taking under 15 seconds per generation. So next we'll cover something architectural. We want a photorealistic exterior of a modern concrete building. I ran this prompt a few times with different seeds. I didn't get much variation. Maybe I could try changing the prompt. But I didn't, I moved on to a realistic photograph of freshly baked bread and here are the two images it produced. So the next prompt was for a photorealistic living room. Again I ran it twice with two different seeds and here are the images it produced. Next I moved on to a couple of anime images. Here's what I got. I changed the prompt to a high detailed anime cinematic portrait and these are what I got. Please let me know in the comments what you think. It will help me improve the videos. And so the next prompt was for a cyber realistic portrait of a human with synthetic skin. And here's what the model produced. I'm not really impressed with any of these. So I did try an anime cyberpunk hybrid. Here's a couple of images. And then I moved on to JSON prompts. So next I decided to use JSON style prompts. We define the action and the camera, etc. Here's an example. Now I'm gonna run through some of these images. So I decided that was enough and I needed to see this up against the Z image workflow. So I went to grab the Z image workflow and I created a head to head workflow running the same prompt for both models. Now let's see how they compare against each other.
So guys, before you disappear, I want to show you the image to image workflow. This is the image editing workflow. Don't disappear because this one is interesting. I'm not going to put it up head to head with the Quen image edit because you guys have seen plenty of that. Let me know in the comments if that's what you want me to do in future. Right now, I would like just to show you the image editing capabilities of this model. So this is a separate workflow. It's also on the Patreon. You can also get it from the comfy.org repo. So here it has a couple of image inputs, one of which is disabled. You can enable it if you want to add two images. First, I tried a Ferrari against the forest background. It worked quite well. I loaded in an image of Aura and a gun and put them together quite well. I managed to place a man on a hover bike. Although I needed a few attempts, it worked out. The orientation of the bike wasn't in the right direction. But hey, I can forgive the model for that. The fact that it's understood and it's managed to do it is very good. With the character consistency test, I did try a few prompts to try to get character consistency. It took a little bit of tweaking on the settings. It's not that great. It's very difficult to keep character consistency in this model. Only slight changes in posture seem to be possible. If you try to change something too drastically, the model breaks and character consistency is lost. So here's the reality check. When I pushed the image to image harder, changed posture, changed composition, changed framing, character consistency started to break. Against Z image, pure text to image quality is lower, editing is less reliable and recovery after changes is weaker. This isn't a knock, it's just capacity and compression showing up. Apache licensed Flux 2 gives you freedom, but Klein clearly bends sooner under pressure. Useful, interesting, but not the best tool here. Test honestly, pick the right model and don't confuse speed with strength. I hope this has been an interesting video. Please share, like, subscribe to support the channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Decode the future.